now we're going to your dad, Charlie Bronson, Britain's most punished prisoner. 46 years he's been in prison. I think he's been free just over 100 days. Yeah. Is this where the relationship started when your dad seen you on the TV? How did that come about, George? Uh, he was watching this programme on Channel 4, Confessions of the Paparazzi, and uh, and he saw me name George Bambi. And at the time, I was like 46. Um, and he was like, George Bambi. It's a pretty unusual name, isn't it? And who I thought was my real dad, who was on my birth certificate, his name was George Bambi. And I went to see... Uh, Paula got in touch with me, uh, Paula Salvador, who my old man married, and said, Charles Bronson wants to see you in prison. So I was like, Charles Bronson wants to see me in prison. Did you think hell. you'd done something wrong? I, I don't know what, I don't know what, <laughs> but my arse was tweaking a bit. I was like, fuck, you know, what does he want? And... Um, so that was it. So I, I was sort of a mixture of excitement, a, a bit puzzled, blah, blah, blah. So um, so this is it wanted me to come and see him. It took like six to eight months to get on the approved list to get visit, to, to be able to visit him because he's such high category. He's classed as in the top eight most dangerous prisoners in the country. Well, he is the most dangerous prisoner in the country. So you go through this six to eight month rigmarole of getting in and uh, the prison service got in touch with me and I've, fill the forms in and all that and I was approved in 48 hours and I was like fucking that's a bit weird so I went to see him and I went to see me Paula the first time and I walked in and he just like where was it I thought it was at Wakefield in the cage he was in in Wakefield a few years ago and I walked in and uh, they took me through all these metal detectors all these machines fucking eye retina scans fingerprint scans through all these doors you know, they did everything apart from crawl up my arse to see what what I had on me. I mean, literally, it is like Heathrow Airport times 100, you know what I mean? Which you can understand. So anyway, I was shitting myself. I had to walk all through the prison, all past all the wings and all that outside, all the excise yards. And in Wakefield, it's a prison inside the prison, on the other side of the prison. And uh, it's a special unit, the CSC unit, the Close, um, close Supervision Centre. So I went in, and they've opened this fucking massive gate, and I'm like shitting myself. I can hear these people, I can hear Charlie going, what the fuck is going on? Fucking five past fucking two, and he's not here. What the fuck? I'm going to fucking knock someone out in a minute. He's giving it all this. I was like, fucking hell. So as I walked through this gate, there's an exercise yard on the left, and I looked over, and there's this massive bloke about seven foot. Honestly, he was massive, beard and all that. Like, Looked really empty in his eyes. Anyway, they took me down this thing and then turned left. And there's a cage there. And uh, we went into this room and there's all these bars and shit. And uh, and Charlie was in there. And he was stood upside down doing a headstand, singing, Please release me, <laughs> let me go. And I was like... So I walked in, I thought, fucking hell, this is a bit bizarre. So we walked in and he's finished off doing his song. And when he's finished, he's just done a backflip, jumped up. And gone, hello, George, he said, nice to meet you. He put his hands through the bar and shook my hands. And I thought, fucking hell, do I grab his hand? What happens if he pulls me in? What what, what do I do? Because you sort of Hannibal panic, you know Lecter. what I mean? Yeah, well, it is, that's what it's like. That's what it's like. So when we went in, the door shut behind me. And as the door shut behind me, there's a massive, big, round, bulletproof glass thing on the door. So he's pulled me in, so we're talking away. And, uh, and then he's just, just got chatting and all this. And he says, um, and he told me, your dad was a very good friend of mine. And I was like, how do you know me dad? And he went, George Bambi. And on my birth certificate, it says George Bambi. And his occupation was turf accountant. He ran a bookmakers. And basically, cut a long story short, what happened was with the visits, he said to me that when um, my dad was running this bookmaker's office... He owed a load of gangsters some money, and he was in the shit. So, um, because he owed him this money, him and Charlie, they arranged for Charlie to go in and rob the post office, uh, rob the, the bookies. So Charlie went in with a fucking shooter and said, right, give me all your money, got away with like three or four grand, and then him and George Bambi shared the money, right, who I thought was my real dad. George Bambi disappeared over to Spain with his money and left my mum, wasn't with her anymore. Then what happened was, just after that, Charlie 
obviously had a bit of a thing going with my mum. We met her at some club in Ellesmere Port. She got pregnant. And uh, and then, obviously, a few months after, whatever happened, happened. George Bambi came back from Spain, come back from Spain, and my mum's pregnant, and she's like, we're having a baby. And at the time, Charlie was in loads of trouble. He was always fucking in trouble with the police, doing robberies and all this shit. So she thought she'd have a better life with George Bambi. So she told him that I was his son, they were pregnant, and that was it. And then he moved back in with her. They were together for about six or seven months. And then Charlie ended up getting sent to prison for seven years. And George Bambi ended up fucking off. And she was on her own anyway. So how was that experience then coming from, basically, when you're 12 years old, growing up yourself, not really knowing who your real dad was, to then having the life that you've had as a photographer, your own TV show, for then Charlie Bronson to send a message out and say, he's your dad, what the fuck were you thinking? I don't know, it was all a bit fucking mad, to be honest, but, I mean, I, I brought up, I've been brought up all my life looking after myself and, and being in kids' homes and, and all the rest of it. I've never really had any parents, never really bothered about them, never been asked, and uh, and that was it. And then when I started meeting up with my dad, we, we, you know, we started talking, and then, you know, he started sending, he started sending me photographs of, like, my mum and my auntie and you know, and friends and telling me stories and saying, oh, do you remember this scar on the back of your mum's hand? You know, she had a scar on the back of her hand there. And apparently she was in a pub one night and she was pissed and she wanted someone to drink and she had a bet with someone she couldn't put a cigar out on the back of her hand for a fiver and she wanted some money for beer, so they bet her, so she put this cigar out on the back of her hand and she got a big scar on the back of her hand. And no one would have ever known about that. There's loads of other different things that he, that he told me that he didn't know about, that, that I didn't know about, that I've since checked with other family members that have confirmed uh, what was going on. So, yeah, so that was it. And then we, there was loads of shit. I've had loads of, st- I've had loads of fucking trolls on the internet and loads of people saying, he's not your dad, you're full of shit, you're fucking into PR, you do stuff with the papers, it's all a load of bullshit, it's a marketing exercise, it's a PR scam and all this shit. It's not. I'm not going to go around telling everyone my dad's fucking Charles Bronson. Mm-hmm. Hey, speak of the devil, he's ringing. Uh... <laughs> Shall I answer it? Yeah. I'm going to give him a bell. Uh, have a chat. Hello? Yeah, I'm all right, Dad. How are you doing? All right. What are you doing? All good? Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just sitting down. I've had a chat with uh, w- with a mate, James. James. Oh, yeah. J- James. Right? Yeah, he's all right. Yeah, he's a nice lad. He knows. Uh, he's, he's had a few chats with Paul Ferris and um, Dave that. Courtney and all that lot. Who else? Right. He's, been, he's been in some good company, didn't he? Vic Dark. Hey. Do you know Vic Dark? Yeah, Vicky Dog, I was in progress with Vicky. Oh, was you? Yeah, East Londoner from Canning Town. Oh, yeah, we were just, we were just talking then about how, we, um, how I found out I was your son. Yeah, well, I was just saying to James, I don't really listen to any of this shit off anyone. We've had our DNA test done through the prison service. We know the cracks. So I'm not. I don't listen to that shit, as you know. Well, the facts are on the table, right? There's no disputing that I was with your mum, right? You weren't the only one. <laughs> we know she was a raving lunatic, but I'm like a magnet. I always magnetise lunatics to me, anyway, mm. right? So that, that's not disputed. Second of all, all you've got to do is look at a photo of you and a photo of me. We've got the same nose, the same eye sockets, the same jawline. Any bloody idiot in the world can see you, my son. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, we're just having a little chat about it, that's all. Yeah, there's a lot of muppets out there, mate, that just want to cause problems all the time. Well, all I'll say to them Muppets are, come and see me later, because I could be out at the end of this year. 